All right, so I, I guess we can start. Um, my name is uh, Luis von Lenz. I work for Intel in OTC in Finland. So I'm going to be presenting about Rosie um, meets, meets uh, Zephyr. It's more like a tutorial and how we use uh, the tools of Bluezy to develop Zephyr sample application and testing. Um, a little bit of, oh, why is it's cutting? Oh. Need to change the resolution. Yeah, maybe just do it like that. So, okay, so a little bit of my background. Um, I started to contribute to Blue Z in 2006 uh, while I was working for a Brazilian company, IND Team Brazil. So uh, then uh, I helped design the Bluetooth audio subsystem in, in Linux, uh, connecting um, Blue Z with both audio to actually handle a to dp connections and, and, and whatnot in, in Classic. Uh, then on late, later 2009, I uh, joined Nokia and moved to Finland um, to start working with, uh, at that uh, time I was still Maemo, and then later on become Migo. Uh, and then later on 2011, uh, well, I guess everybody know what happens in 2011 regarding Migo. Uh, I moved to Intel OTC and then start uh, working for, for Intel. Uh, 2013, I became the user space maintainer of Blue Z. Been quite a while in, in Blue Z community and uh, mainly maintaining and, and doing other uh, stuff for Blue Z, other uh, uh, profiles and, and, and whatnot, especially automotive. I was heavily involved uh, with automotive until last year. Uh, and then later, uh, last, last year, I joined the Zephyr Bluetooth subsystem where we started uh, doing the uh, Zephyr Bluetooth in the early stages, bringing up the, the, the subsystem to what it is now. All right, so let's see how I switch. Okay. All right, a little bit about the agenda. I'm going to start uh, explaining what tools we use to, well, develop uh, Zephyr uh, applications and, and whatnot, what, what they are, where they do and how useful they are to actually uh, develop new applications and debug and do other testing that you might, I mean, might be useful, uh, at least in the prototyping stage and, and later on even qualification. Um, then I'm going to talk about uh, Zephyr tests in, uh, in samples that we currently have in, in Zephyr. They are quite extensive, actually. Um, a little bit of demos, if everything works well, now that we arranged the, present the, the presentation. And then finally, the test automation. Um, what are the tests that we are executing and whatnot, and regarding a little bit the qualification. Uh, so, well, let's start with the Blue Z big picture. Uh, well, the, the presentation is not really about Blue Z, but uh, I guess it's, it's a good idea to show what uh, Blue Z is capable of, because a lot of times people may confuse, okay, Blue Z is just the user space, or it's the kernel space, and we have a lot of uh, modularity, and we can use a lot of the, the Bluetooth subsystem in the kernel to, do, to uh, write tools and uh, other stuff. So that's why it's important, uh, especially like things like HI on the on the uh, uh, kernel and um, uh, other models like uh, six low pun and whatnot that are coming up. So we can actually do testing uh, with Zephyr with uh, Linux as well, and then test each other. So it's it's kind of a good synergy between the the Linux subsystem and then Zephyr subsystem. So we can actually share a lot of tools and, and do a lot of testing with each other. So, well, I guess everybody knows or should already seen this picture before. We have in the user space, we have the Bluetooth, Bluetooth D daemon. Uh, there is a lot of uh, plugins and even you can uh, connect external uh, profiles nowadays. On top of that, we have OBEX, although this is not really relevant for, for this presentation. Uh, in the kernel space, we have a lot of things that we actually may use uh, the management for actually uh, tuning up the, 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 the 
controller, so it's low level access for a uh, adapter connected to, to the system. Uh, and then we have all the basic profiles and, and that are implemented there. Uh, Autocap air comb, uh, Autocap including connection or oriented channels that we use for, for six lopa and uh, then the drivers uh, and whatnot. So it's uh, quite uh, easy to actually hook a, a USB dongle and then and do stuff with it, even if you're gonna use directly on your host or if you're gonna use, for example, with KMO and then a, a, a another virtual machine, maybe running Zephyr or, or something else. Okay, so one of the first or the first uh, so we're gonna uh, explain is the BT proxy. It's under tools uh, BT proxy in user space. Uh, it uses the user channel. The user channel is, well, it's quite neat because uh, we can actually open a, a socket uh, with the kernel saying, okay, I want this uh, controller the adapter to have, uh, I, want, I want to have exclusive, exclusive uh, access to this adapter. So it shuts down all the other parts of the, the stack, and then just leave up to the to the up to the tool to actually deal with the with the controller. So in this case, we can actually then use it for um, use it the, the user channel to uh, create a HI UART proxy. So you can actually uh, start proxying um, HI events directly with the controller and then interacting in some other manner. So in that case, you can actually use this to uh, forward uh, your controller to a virtual machine, like running a Zephyr, and then it can just uh, um, start doing your drivers with that. So it's, it's uh, very easy, interesting to also support TCP. So if you want to do with another uh, host, you can actually do it with another host. So it's, it's, it's really useful and has being used like since the beginning for us in, uh, in, uh, when we start doing the Bluetooth sy subsystem because then we don't depend on actually doing any kind of uh, real or having real hardware to ramp up the, the, the HI uh, driver stack. Of course, we want board support for, for Zephyr and, and whatnot, but this kind of a prototyping, this is like much faster because you don't have to deal with any details of like the board doesn't work or that there is some something, the GPIO or something that uh, is missing. This is just cutting like a lot of time for, for prototyping. You just use this tool and then just go, go with it. And then another one that is really, really nice is our emulation. So do they actually have a uh, full emulation of HI, which is uh, really, really useful. So you, instead of just uh, um, having kind of any controller that you could hook up, for example, with a, a BT proxy and then forward to the virtual machine, you can actually emulate a, a virtual controller and then use BT proxy. So you, in that case, you don't need any hardware. It's just a full emulation of HI on, on software. Uh, and in fact, we also have uh, this um, HIMO instance that can uh, create then uh, uh, you create this uh, uh, internally. This uh, BT Dev, they are connected together when you when you create uh, these instances, so they can see each other. If you advertise or attempt to connect, they, they can see each other like they are in the same network. And then on top of that, we have like a kind of second uh, uh, stack that's called BT Host that has much lower uh, lower um, access to the stack. It's kind of raw mode. And then you can create invalid test cases uh, using that. So we can fully automate kind of any kind of test with that because it's, it's, it's completely not, uh, well, it doesn't have even to follow the Bluetooth specification because it's just a, a talking role, HI there, and then you can send like, a, well, uh, do invalid tests and, and whatnot. So it's, it's really useful. And then it's using the, the Bluetooth subsystem the VHI to create virtual controllers. So it, and, and this has been for a while there, and we have support for uh, um, all DLE uh, HI commands as well as the, the classic. So it's, it's fully supported, and it's been quite handy to actually test new, new stuff that, well, 
maybe if you don't have like uh, uh, commands for, let's say, Bluetooth 5 or any upcoming uh, Bluetooth specification, you can actually implement first in the emulator and then try it out first uh, with the emulator. So you don't actually need to bring your, your have the, the real hardware ready all the time. You can actually uh, do the testing with the emulator first. And then prototyping becomes really easy with that. All right, so moving next. Uh, okay, so uh, this is another one that uh, it really has been evolving uh, recently. Um, it's uh, the, the uh, BT monitor. It's a full HI tracer that uh, it was, uh, before we, we used to have the HI dump, but the HI dump uh, couldn't decode actually the neat sequence because the kernel would first do the init uh, sequence and only then you could see uh, the adapter and then monitor it. So we uh, would, would like to see the, the init sequence, which is actually quite useful when you, we are doing a kind of new driver or something. Uh, you see what, uh, if there is any error in the init sequence or kind of uh, the firmware doesn't load or, or other things, then now you can see with the, the, with the monitor. Um, it can include also logs, other logs that uh, uh, um, you may have, like if Bluetooth D crashes or or something, it can actually log uh, in the in the uh, in the tool. So you, not only you see the HI traces, but also if there's causing any kind of crash, then you're gonna just report right uh, in in the in the in the tool. I'm gonna show it a, a, a more in the in the demos. So you're gonna see how it actually uh, decodes everything and you can see the traffic and, and whatnot. Uh, it can also save in, in a file, so we, it uses the, the well-known format uh, called uh, btsnoop for uh, storing the, the, the logs and then you can even use uh, Wireshark to decode this. So it's both useful for like uh, doing a real-time uh, uh, monitoring of the packets or you can actually store <coughs> this for later and, and, and check if there's something wrong with the logs or something, you can actually do that as well. Uh, and then later on, because the things we, we uh, were doing with Zephyr, uh, it's starting to support also TTY. So if you have like a serial console with your board or I mean your virtual machine or whatnot, uh, you can actually uh, connect this and uh, uh, see the logs from the remote board so it doesn't, the, the Zephyr doesn't need to actually have a, a full uh, HI decoder because we can just use the Linux, Linux one to do that, including saving the file or something like that. So it's really easy to debug uh, problems using this feature. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Okay, well, the, the measurement interface, uh, yeah, BT management, uh, this is not that relevant for um, Zephyr in itself, but uh, if you want to tune some settings or something like that on, on, on the uh, Linux side, you can use uh, BT management, for example, to uh, turn it in, in a single mode or, or something like that. So it's, uh, it's a much more lower level than what we have in Boozy Dibuzz API, for example. Uh, but then you can do a lot of more stuff and, um, well, you can basically uh, do most of the, the uh, HI layer and, and, and more because it has uh, full access to, to the kernel side. Uh, of course, then it requires permission to do that because you can do uh, uh, things like advertising and, and whatnot that uh, uh, main, uh, may interfere with the uh, usage of uh, Bluetooth D. So it's usually you go with either uh, this or you run uh, uh, Bluetooth D separately and then use uh, uh, the bus uh, clients to actually control it. So they don't interfere with e each other. That's well, the usual oper operation of the, the tools, uh, the um, uh, Blue Z APIs. So and then the next one is uh, the Bluetooth CTL. 
So this one also come a, a, a long way. So we, we have been uh, um, uh, in, introducing more and more uh, um, um, commands to it. It's a command line uh, tool that you can control uh, uh, Bluetooth D. And then you can uh, um, start like things like scanning, advertising, uh, connect pair. And, it, and it, even the, the, the GAT uh, uh, operations is now supported. So you can test pretty much uh, everything that uh, uh, BlueZ offers over DBus. And then, of course, this is used to interact with the Zephyr in the other end. And uh, that's why I'm bringing this up, because, I mean, a lot of times uh, you start like uh, an application and uh, you don't know how to test it. Or sometimes you, you need to uh, install something on your phone, like the um, Nordic uh, application that do this kind of gut browsing or whatnot, but you cannot compare like side by side with this. You can actually compare side by side what is the results on, on, on each other. So when connecting or when scanning, uh, what's the, the, the latency of well, how often it's showing, and et cetera. So it's uh, really useful, especially if you like don't have a UI environment or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it replaces the GAT2 as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, the management interface uh, actually replaced a lot of this uh, raw HI access that we used to have. So most of the tools uh, starting with HI are now deprecated because of that. So we, could, we use the management tool to, to do most of it. And then uh, for like higher le uh, level, like the, the GAT2, we use uh, Bluetooth CTL now can do most of it already. What is the name the GAT2? Is it like command line name? Uh, it's Bluetooth CTL. I'm actually going to show in the demo, so okay, okay, okay. it's going to be a bit more clear what, is, what it is. All right? Okay. All right, so let's continue with Zephyr. This was the main point here, right? So in Zephyr, we have like a lot of tests and, and samples. Uh, for tests, we have two main ones. We have the shell, which you can use for like testing almost or pretty much everything that we have in, in, the, in the Zephyr um, APIs. So you can do advertisement, you can do scanning, and et cetera, GAT, and and whatnot, AutoCAP as well. Uh, and we have the tester. The tester is quite special as well because the tester implements our automation with uh, PTS, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more later about the, the, the PTS uh, uh, test automation. But the, the tester is, is for that. So we have, it's quite big. It actually have an interface to program uh, um, what you want in the GAT database and et cetera. So this can actually uh, be connected with uh, PTS and go back, back and forth. Uh, for the samples, we have uh, the minimal one is, is the beacon. It basically beacons uh, 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 Edstone URL. So you, you can see like um, Zephyr website uh, as, as the beacon. Uh, we have the central that does the, the testing the, the, the central uh, APIs. So you can actually uh, connect to a peripheral or something like that. We have the headstone. The, uh, the headstone there is actually for configuration. So it actually does more than just the, the beacon. You can configure it with a different uh, URL, uh, et cetera. Uh, it's still not complete. There is still this um, um, pending support for some of the locking and unlocking uh, logic that they have. And then it uses um, security actually to to lock it and, and, and whatnot. So it's still pending completion for that. So for now, we're gonna uh, advertise for uh, with the Edstone configuration service for about 30 seconds, and then turn back to a beacon mode what is basically beacon the Edstone uh, URL. Uh, and then we have IPSP, so yeah, six low fun um, support over uh, Bluetooth. We do have support uh, for either the old stack or, I mean, the Contiki stack that we 
used to, we still have in, 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 in Zephyr. Uh, and I'm working on to add support for the upcoming native stack. So that's still ongoing, of course, and there's a talk even about that later today by Yuka. And uh, well, I'm gonna try even to show a demo about that and uh, show how, how it is uh, the state right now, what you can do with it. Uh, and then we have a bunch of uh, peripherals. Um, we have um, heart rate, we have uh, um, HID service. Uh, although the HID service is, uh, right now is not doing much because it's just uh, emulating a, a mouse. So we have uh, the, the USB descriptor, you connect to it, you can see that is a mouse, but it doesn't move or, or do anything. So we be missing integration with some sort of sensor, but the main point was to exercise Bluetooth, which it, it does, right? So that's pretty much what we, we have in terms of uh, what the tests and samples we have. And of course, if anybody has a, uh, another idea for a good sample, you welcome any, any samples that people might, might use for, for exercising our APIs. Okay. A little bit more about the beacon. Well, that's basically explaining what the, the advertising API does. So currently we have a kind of, uh, well, almost raw uh, uh, interface, but we have some macros to actually define uh, what is the, the, the data that goes into the advertisement packet. Uh, so this is actually what the beacon is doing. Uh, it's adding the, the, this data to the, to the advertisement and is starting the, the, the advertisement, and that's how it's, uh, you can get the, the Zephyr URL going. Uh, for the peripherals, you basically define then a uh, GAP database. So you define, for in this case, is a heart rate monitor um, service, sorry. Uh, we have a set of uh, 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 macros to define what is the, the characteristics, the descriptors, the CCC, so you can actually uh, uh, do a notification with it. Uh, and then you define uh, the permissions for each of the attributes. Um, some permissions may require, for, for example, authentication, encryption, etc. So this is, well, the, the peripheral API for, for GAT is basically doing that. So you can see you define a table and and it actually becomes the, the, the service there. When the remote do a discover, it's actually gonna figure out what is the handles of this, which we generate when we register the, 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 the table, and then uh, it can actually access uh, each of the, the attributes doing that. So it's, it's quite simple, and well, it, it, we, we decide to put this actually on this, uh, um, let's say, in the application side, because then we don't have to define like a, a size of a, a database ourselves with a kconfig. So it's not as, as strict on the kconfig. If the application have enough, enough memory and wants to define a huge database, it can do that. Or it can even split between files, so it becomes more like a, a list of uh, a different service. So you can do that as well. All right. So. Let's see if I can show us some demos here. Sure. The beacon? No, the 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this one is, is using a link list. Uh, you, we have a key config saying, okay, it's a dynamic uh, database, so it actually can can use a link list for that. So then I can place constant and flash. Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's try the demo then. Okay, so on the bottom, I actually set up the um, Bluetooth monitor to, uh, 
to uh, monitor the, the, the controller. So I have two virtual controllers that are going to talk to each other using the, the emulation. You can see that the, even the text that's a virtual uh, uh, adapters both on, on the bottom. Um, and then here, I'm going to try to run the, let's see if I can run it. So this is, oh, let me switch to this one first. I want to show the shell first. Well, it's the same setup. You can see that uh, it, it's doing the same setup for, for showing what is the, the, the traces, uh, where it's going to appear is in, in the bottom. And then I have a, uh, in, in this, in the left side, your left side, is uh, there is the, the Bluetooth CTO, so it's the Linux box running in the left side, and then in the right side is uh, Zephyr going to be running. Okay, so let's see if the demo effect is going to work or not. Okay, so let's start. Well, there is a bunch of uh, commands that you can, can do with, uh, with the shell. It's almost exercising, as I said before, almost ex exercising our API. So we have like really almost everything there. So every time we add a new API or a new feature, we might actually uh, change the shell. So we include that. So you can do uh, authentication with that. You can do connections. You can do GAT. You can even do uh, AutoCAP with that. So the first thing normally you do, you do init. And then you see right in the bottom that is doing init already, uh, showing, showing the, the init se sequence here. Uh, so you can see all the commands. I hope you can see. This is a virtual controller? Virtual controller. It's all virtual. It's doing the, the init se sequence. So you see it's initialized as a, it's even using a, a um, temporary, or I mean, it's using RQ to generate a, a, a private address. So, and then if I advertise, actually, let me start scanning. So I can do scan. Oops, this is might not do. That's a real device. Yeah, that's a demo effects. So I want probably this one. So I have another two dongles going to connect to me. That's why it's showing so many. So I'm going to select this. So as you can see, Bluetooth CTL actually support multiple adapters. So we can actually switch back to the adapter that we want to test. I mean, uh, we do a scanning, it's discovering, then I advertise here. Then we have the test shell there. And you can connect to it. You see, it's not even using the, the, the same address that was configured initially because it's using a private address. So you can see it's, it's already different. And then you go and do connect. And then it's connected. And then for here, you can also, well, can do a disconnect, for example. Uh, and then if I want to show, uh, for example, the, the heart rate monitor simulation. Oops. Yeah, OK, so it started. So. On. Ah, it's already advertising. Yeah, okay. Uh, now it's connected. And then let's expand this one. Oh, we have heart rate monitor now. And you can access this. So we have like a uh, as I said, the, the API has evolved, so you can actually access, uh, let's access the measurement. So I 
you can access this one, and then you can do notify on, and then it should start notifying. So this is all running with the emulation. So you can, if I do this, you can see on the bottom they are transferred to each other. It's and with the shell, actually, you can do the opposite as well. So you can uh, connect as a central. So it, it's not only doing peripheral, it's also doing central. So you can test pretty much everything. And User space. Yeah. We have uh, the the um, emulation code under BlueZ3 under uh, emulator. Okay. So there you can see all the, the, the code, what it's doing. And then we also have this uh, kind of uh, simulated stack, a BT host there. So you can do other tests if you, if you want. So now disconnect. Okay, now it's disconnected. So, well, let's try something more advanced, or at least uh, that the latest thing I've, I've been trying. Sorry. Is this connection like real time? Is the connection goes one second, then you execute the packet from one second, and then the next I don't think we emulate like uh, per, per spec, but it's HI emulation, right? The timing may be different. Actually, it's different, right? You're not going to uh, do uh, kind of uh, add the latencies of the going over the radio and et cetera. So it goes straight. Yeah. It's, it's, it's basically a socket, socket pair or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But for prototyping like a GAT or something, it's, it's just perfect because then you don't, you don't depend on any kind of hardware. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see if I leave anything. No. Let's close this one. Uh, and then let's try the, well, this is going to be running the echo server from IP. It's basically to initialize the IP stack and then uh, initialize the link layer with Bluetooth so we can try uh, IPSP. Uh, with the new stack, actually, this is using the native stack. So it's, uh, this code is quite uh, recent. Uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay, looks like it's, it works. So we have initialized, and then we have the auto cap also. Initialize so it's, it's listing on the uh, PSP and I think it's 35 if I'm not mistaken of the the IPSP. So now let's try to connect. So this is well I'm trying to connect uh, from the Linux machine. We don't have uh, yet the the full APIs for the main APIs to do this uh, properly from uh, Bluetooth D, but otherwise it probably would be Bluetooth D that would uh, initialize the connection to IPSP. So I have to use uh, debug FS. Uh, this is actually documented on, on, on the samples. So you can see in the samples how to set up this in the uh, IPSP readme. So I'm gonna start connecting to it. Or nothing happened. It's too scanning here. So scanning before this is the command that you set up something. Yeah, right. Let me, yeah, demo effect. <laughs> Let me see if there is something here. But uh, I stopped this one. Ah, this one was scanning. Uh, it shouldn't be a big deal, but. Yeah, it might be that it's not the default anymore. Uh, 
Oh, OK. I, I can figure uh, we can uh, test this uh, later on. It might be just the, the, the wrong uh, adapter. So it's not coming from, from the, uh, it's not trying to connect from the virtual machine. And then, of course, it doesn't find because it's emulated and never goes over there. I can figure out this later. So we can continue with the presentation. OK, well, done with the demos. So what else we have? We have uh, the Bluetooth PTS for doing the, the um, uh, qualification testing. Actually, it's an official tool for doing qualification testing. It's, uh, it's provided by um, Bluetooth SIG. So it's basically the official way to do uh, qualification. It implements the, the test uh, uh, specification. So you can actually see from the test specific specification what tests are uh, necessary for each of uh, the profiles. Um, as I said, it's, it's mandatory if you want to uh, qualify. Sometimes PTS doesn't implement all the test specification, and then you have to provide the results yourself or one way or the other. Uh, it's a Windows tool. So yeah, it's not going to be able to at least run on, on Linux, so like not directly, if, if, except if you run a virtual machine. It requires quite some level of expertise of knowing what the profile requires and stuff like that. It's very often that you have to kind of unpair and repair because uh, something changes or PTS is confused by some of the service that you had before or stuff like that. So it's, it's quite demanding. We were like measuring like a few days actually to complete a test run for just get or something like that. So it's, it's really demanding to, to do manual testing with uh, PTS. But recently they introduced uh, some means to do uh, uh, automation with their Con API. Uh, um, before it was basically doing um, if I remember correctly, it's basically doing this uh, dialogue automation. So you would have to know the dialogue of each of the, the requests to accept or reject or whatever. So it was even harder. But now this is a bit better. Let's see if it keeps improving. So well, regarding the, the, the idea that we have to, to automate this, uh, we create this uh, PTS automation framework. It probably not, not be the official name, or we're still studying what, how we're gonna open source this, uh, but we intend to. Um, the server is actually implemented in Python, and the client uh, as well. So the client run on a Linux box, and of course the server has to be run on a Windows because it's, well, talking to PTS. So that's the way it, it does. And, and then in the implementation, it could be Zephyr, it could, it could be other implementation like Linux as well. So we are trying to make it uh, as generic as possible. So we can also test uh, a Blue Z as well. Um, and then we have the BTP uh, protocol, is blue, or we called BTP protocol, the Bluetooth testing protocol, to actually uh, program uh, what uh, the test should be doing, what is the execution of the test, and programming, uh, uh, um, for example, what the database, or data database should be present for that test, and other stuff like that. Uh, so the big picture is something like this. Uh, so we have the Windows host uh, running PTS. Uh, it's talking over XML RPC to the uh, Linux host. And then the Linux host can be talking to the uh, implementation itself with a uh, BT bridge protocol. So you can actually, or which could be Zephyr or, or some other implementation. So uh, it could be emulated as well uh, with uh, KMO or, or real hardware. Uh, we have been testing actually with both. So it, we know that it works with, with both. So it's. Um, the, the, well, basically the BTP is already there. And we, the tester uh, application is already implemented the BTP protocol, so you can see what commands are there. Uh, it's documented on, on, on the source tree. Uh, we are just working now with uh, Bluetooth SIG to know, well, the, uh, when we can open source or how we can open source the, the solution. So it, it would make uh, a lot of things much simpler for us uh, 
for testing, maybe we could uh, uh, rerun the test every uh, release or something and qualify or stuff like that. So at least we have, uh, well, we know that is uh, 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 qualification readiness of the, 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 the stack. So, uh, a little bit more of the kind of uh, the BTP uh, protocol tester. It is as um, split in different services. So we have the core service that can register other service. Uh, for now, we have the GAP uh, service for doing um, discovery connections and, and whatnot. Well, the, the GAP procedure. Uh, we get uh, the GAT service that can register uh, attributes and can also act as a client. So we can test both the server and the client side. Uh, and we have the AutoCAP service. Uh, is, is doing connection or inter channels so we can do connections, uh, send and receive data. This is uh, what is used for uh, doing IPSP, for example. And we have been running this uh, with PTS, for at least the tests that uh, they are implemented there. The BTP is more like our local uh, uh, solution to program just the, 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 the interface with the uh, OS itself. It's not the interface with the PTS. Well, I guess it's going to be open source anyway. It already is. I mean, we already have this in, under uh, Zephyr Tree. Uh, of course, if people want to replicate the same protocol, we would be fine. It's probably, it's probably useful. I mean, in that sense, it's very, it's very useful. What we've been trying to do is minimize the amount of code that we are running uh, on the PTS side. So it's just really thin layer of error that mm. the PTS automation, especially one from mapping to the section of RPP. And then all the magic happens from the other machine. The one that we control, basically. OK, so. Here's a bit of the diagram, uh, what uh, the BTP is about. Uh, we have uh, commands in response and then events if, uh, well, something has changed or uh, some kind of uh, notification or reports or something uh, that is not uh, requested by a command. So we, we also have uh, events for that. So it's uh, really simple. Well, there's not, nothing much to actually explain about BTP. This is very simple uh, uh, interface to, to, to program the, the service there. Uh, a little bit of the, the test case example, how we, we run the test. So this is, f for example, for, for GAP. Then we have the uh, test name. This is basically coming from the test specification, where you can see exactly what they are, they are testing. And then we have a set of steps how to do it, uh, you can actually program some stuff like the, uh, it's called Pixit as a, the, the configuration of uh, uh, each, each of uh, the tests, so you can configure uh, what is the address and, uh, and whatnot. So um, this is basically how you would uh, define a test and then that is run for, for uh, testing the, the, well, testing the, 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 the test that was uh, specified. And this is the current results. So we are quite happy because it's passing almost everything already. So we have uh, from GAP to well to cap including the secret manager as well, yeah. is running there. Uh, we have some fails that, uh, I mean, uh, we are trying to fix those. I think we actually already reduced those because by the time I was doing the presentation, there was already some discussions about uh, fixi fixing those. And then, of course, we have BTS issues as well. BTS is uh, not perfect, so it sometimes has uh, issues. Um, and then, of course, every time that uh, they release a new version and they have more tests, we're going to update this. Uh, it's probably never going to end. I mean, this, uh, testing is never like fully complete. But at least we have something, and this is actually covering most of it already. So if somebody goes, takes uh, the Bluetooth stack right now from Zephyr, it's going to be, I mean, not losing too much time doing qualification with these uh, test results. 
All right, so with that, I'm ready for questions. Hope I didn't go over time. Roughly. Sorry about the demo, it didn't work. Is there any documentation to reproduce the environment that you demonstrated today? Sure, I actually was thinking about that because, um, for example, we don't have, um, uh, we do have the, the, the configuration to do the proxy, the BAT proxy, but we don't do the, the configuration for the emulation. So that's something I'm probably going to write in the read fi uh, readme file. So you can actually do the full emulation with just uh, doing the uh, BT proxy and, and whatnot. So it actually is quite easy to set up. Yeah, for prototyping, I, I mean, it's the fastest way to, to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because of the, the, the samples we, we are running, we, we, we can do that. But of course, if uh, people want to do with uh, BlueZ as well, no problem. I mean, we have the tools there. When you're running the you actually run the tools. Yeah, I was running basically just emulation. The, the shell uh, was just emulated bo both ways. And it emulates the whole OS with the same The whole HI. Kimu, yeah, Kimu. Yeah. Yeah. That's an ARM target also. Yeah. The, the tester is actually using uh, the ARM because we need more ports. So the BTP actually uses the serial port to communicate with Zephyr, for example. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any more questions? No, I guess is it. Thank you.